Nowadays, all movie lovers living in Asia, Africa or America know these guys, but only a few will recognize this actor. If you recognize Chris O'Donnell, then like this video. Surprisingly, in the early 90s, Chris was the preferred choice for studios and directors. He was a lucky charm. The magazine People named him one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. But then something in the actor's career went wrong, and now he can no longer be seen on big screens. In this video, we would like to remember the career of Chris O'Donnell and understand what happened to him. Chris O'Donnell is a unique actor. He started his way into the big cinema at the age of 19. He played the son of Jessica Lange, then fried green tomatoes with another Oscar winner Kathy Bates, and then again with Jessica Lange in Blue Sky, for the role in which the actress won her second Oscar. And in 1991, the studios were looking for a young guy to help Pal Pacino and decided Chris was the right guy to help Pal Pacino win his first Oscar. The agent of the actor, who made him star in Sin of a Woman, helped this to happen. The agent, according to the actor's assurances, an impressive check as a thank you for his persistence. However, Chris's participation in the filming of this movie was a great success at the audition. He bypassed a large number. Then no one wanted actors such as Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Brendan Fraser. Send of a Woman was a breakthrough for Chris and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip came to an audition five times, and four times, he was rejected. The actor at the time worked as a supermarket clerk and was already thinking that an acting career could not work. Hoffman would later say that the film changed everything and gave a powerful impetus to his career, after which he could quit his day job and finally focus only on movies. All in all, Scent of a Woman hit theaters in 1992, where on a budget of 30 million, it grossed 134 million at the box office. Chris was also celebrated at the Golden Globes. He received a nomination for Best Supporting Actor and advice from Mel Pacino that he shouldn't date actresses. In the same year, a small project called School Ties was released with the actor which didn't become a hit but brought in a small profit and was well received by audiences and critics. Chris was quickly designated as a rising star in all lists of young talents, occupying one of the top spots, and chose the three musketeers from all the scenarios he was thrown at. There were better choices than the three musketeers, but at the time, the movie was conceived as the first part of a trilogy. But after the failure at the box office, they gave up on that idea. Chris was nominated for the Golden Raspberry as the worst actor. He didn't have good offers for a long time and turned down many scenarios, mainly unprofitable comedies. In the end, after taking a whole year off, Chris auditioned for the movie Batman Forever. Before Chris O'Donnell was cast, Mark Wahlberg, Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, and Jude Law had all been considered for the role of Robin at some point. Batman Forever, with a budget of 100 million, grossed 336 million at the box office, and Chris was so well liked by the audience that Warner Studios started work on a spin off dedicated to Robin. After Batman, his royalties skyrocketed. For the melodrama Mad Love, he received a million and a half dollars, and the subsequent The Chamber is already 4 million. The thriller The Chamber seemed to be a predictable success. It was based on a novel by John Grisham, whose work in the 90s Hollywood was in great demand, and all the films based on the book by the author became big box office hits. And Brad Pitt was supposed to star in The Chamber, but at some point, he got suspicious and left, and Chris O'Donnell came in and failed again. With a budget of 50 million, the movie only managed to collect 22 million at the box office. Naturally, critics trashed the film, such a failure would have hit the actor's career, but he had already been signed to shoot Batman and Robin. It is commonly believed that it was the one that thoroughly derailed O'Donnell's career. That's not entirely true. Surprisingly, Batman and Robin, for all the criticism and box office failure, didn't hurt anyone's career. At least all the actors still got their chances after its release. But during the filming of Batman and Robin, 
what exactly O'Donnell calls the biggest mistake of his career happened. Chris turned down the lead role in the movie Men in Black. True, no one knows what would have happened to the movie. Perhaps with Will Smith, the project was more successful, but he was one of the main contenders for the lead male role in James Cameron's Titanic. More precisely, the main contender there was Johnny Depp, who turned down the offer and, for a while, really regretted it. But right after him, O'Donnell and Leonardo DiCaprio were considered, and Cameron opted for Leo. After the failure of Batman and Robin, failures with Titanic and Men in Black, Chris fell into a depression and began to refuse all offers which came to him two whole years. But here, too, James Cameron wanted to make his Spider-Man with Chris in the lead role, but the project was cancelled and a few years later Tobey Maguire hit the jackpot with director Sam Raimi. In theory, the actor's career could have been very different. It was only in 1999 Chris returned to big screens with the movie The Bachelor. The studio was so confident in the picture's success that there were no savings on the production. Because of this circumstance, The Bachelor's budget is crazy for this film format of $51 million. O'Donnell was the main star, and it was on him that the dissatisfaction with the studio came down after the film's failure, as well as all the critics' anger, which was also directed at Chris. Here the actor had a bit of luck while filming The Bachelor. He signed on for another movie, Vertical Limit, but there was already talk in Hollywood that Chris was not good choice, and they tried to remove him from the US posters of the picture. Its original development began as early as 1993rd years. The script was rewritten several times, and eventually, it became the film that made it to theaters. Chris understood that this was for him in general, then the last chance to somehow gain a foothold in Hollywood. Then he did almost all the movie stints and tried to do even the most dangerous. The film hit the box office in December of the year 2000 and had every chance to perform well. It had a very impressive advertising budget with a production budget of $75 million. The movie could have been profitable over the long haul, but a couple of weeks later, Cast Away with Tom Hanks appeared in theaters as a direct competitor. After that, the movie didn't stand a chance. I frustrated O'Donnell left Hollywood again for two years. When he wanted to return, he had already been forgotten and offered no good scripts. Somehow he was able to get one of the leading roles in the movie 29 Palms, but the film was so awful that it was afraid to send to theaters and immediately released on video. He was offered to star in B-movies, which went to conquer many actors whose careers followed Chris's script, but the actor chose television. On television, does not say that everything has turned out great. He sometimes glimpses in the episodes of popular TV shows, but when he tries to play a major role in any series, he does not even have time to release an entire season. The ratings there are so amazing that the channels close the projects. His last quite successful TV project is their duet with LL Cool J in NCIS Los Angeles where he appeared in over 300 episodes. Overall, it's hard to say why Chris didn't make it. The problem could be that he quickly lost his model look in the 90s. He gained weight and became hard to recognize. Well, the luck factor has not been canceled. If he had done Titanic, the whole world would call Chris's name with the same admiration as he calls Leo's name now.